Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nuralia Bintazreen. I'm going to present financial statement analysis on two companies which are Dutch Lady Milk Industries Berhad and Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia Berhad. Excuse me if I'm just simply use Dutch Lady and Carlsberg throughout this whole presentation. Okay, so uh, this is the overview for my presentation. So basically financial statement analysis is divided into three analyses which are uh, horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, and ratio analysis. Where ratio analysis is divided into actually four ratios, but I'm going to use just three ratio here, which are profitability ratio, liquidity ratio, and solvency ratio. Uh, before I end the presentation, I'm going to give a conclusion to recommend which company is better to invest. Okay, so I'm going to start with horizontal analysis. This analysis, uh, measure the changes in percentage whether uh, it increase or decrease for each item in income statement. So we will start with the Lady Industries Berhad income statement. So in order to get this percentage, we have to minus the amount in current year to the amount in prior year. And the amount we get for the answer, we have to divide with the amount in prior year. So if the answer is Positive, it is increased, and if the answer is negative, it decreases. I will explain some of the items here, and I will start with revenue. For revenue, you can see here that uh, there is uh, increase with the amount of 3.19% from the prior year, which means that in 2020, the revenue increases 3.19% uh, from 2019 which results in the decrease in gross profit where uh, in 2020, the gross profit decreased 11.8% from 2019. And the most obvious uh, change changes we can see here is uh, on other income item. Well, actually, there is typo here. There should not be bracket because it increases. It increases. Uh, okay. Okay, so you guys can see uh, there is a huge difference here where it changes 93.4%, increases 93.4% in 2020 compared to 2019. Okay, next I'm going to proceed with Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia Berhad Income Statement. If you can see uh, from the whole picture, you can see that most of the item is this, uh, decreases. Okay, so for revenue, you can see that there is a decrease 20.9% uh, for 2020 compared to 2019, which also resulted in decreases in uh, profit, uh, gross profit with the amount of 32.5%. And the most big changes we can see here is on other expenses item, where the, uh, the changes is 4,248%. Uh, we can see also here the big, uh, very huge uh, increases in other, other expenses. Even we heard, even we uh, say it increased, doesn't mean, doesn't mean it is a good sign because this item is other expenses, which mean that this company expense more in uh, 2020 compared to 2019. Yes. Okay, next we are going to proceed with vertical analysis. This analysis is used to show the relationship between uh, each items in income statement by expressing each item with a percent to a key figure and where the key figure is set to 100%. In, in this analysis, I'm using revenue as uh, the key figure. Okay, so I'm going to explain some of the items also. Okay, so let's start with gross profit. As you guys can see here, the gross profit is 32.44% of revenue resulted in gross profit on 2020, while 37.94% of revenue resulted in gross profit for 2019. Okay, while for net profit, there is 9.65% uh, of revenue resulted in net profit in 2019 while there is only 6.67% of revenue resulted in net profit on 2020. And uh, to conclude, there is 
uh, uh, that's lady make industries per height per, uh, gain more profit on 2019 compared to 2020. Okay, uh, next is for Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia per height. Uh, same as before, I'm using revenue as the key figure. And uh, for the gross profit, you can see here that there is only 27.12% of revenue resulted in gross profit in 2020. Well, there is 31.78% of revenue resulted in gross profit on 2019. And for the net profit, uh, there is 13.31% of revenue resulted in net profit on 2019. While there is only 9.31% of revenue resulted in net profit on 2020. So we can say that uh, this company, Carlsberg, produced uh, or gain more profit in 2019 compared to 2020. Okay, I'm going to proceed with ratio analysis and start with profitability ratio. This ratio measures the effectiveness of an income of an organization in a given period of time, where the higher ratio is better. So I'm going to start with return on equity ROE, where uh, ROE measure the effectiveness of the use of the capital. So in the uh, formula in, we include capital where profit or earning after tax over average capital times 100%. And this is the calculation for both companies where uh, ROE for Dutch Lady is 115%, where ROE for Carlsberg is 111%. So um, uh, we can say that Dutch Lady uh, earn more net income for each ringgit of the capital compared to Carlsberg. Okay, uh, the second one for prof profitability ratio is written on assets employed. So uh, this measure the effective use of assets. So the formula will include assets at the denominator. And this is the calculations for both company companies. Uh, ROA for Dutch Lady is 15.6% while ROA for Carlsberg is 25.3%. So uh, we can say that Carlsberg uh, earn more net income for each ringgit of assets compared to Dutch Lady. Okay, the next one for profitability ratio is gross profit margin, where it measures the percentage of one ringgit of sales that resulted in gross profit. So the formula will include both gross profit and sales. And then uh, this is the calculation for both companies. Uh, gross profit margin for Dutch Lady is 32.4% while Carlsberg is 27.1% where it shows that Dutch Lady have uh, more sales that result in gross profit compared to Carlsberg. Okay, the last one for profitability ratio is net profit margin. It measures the percentage of one of sales that resulted in net profit. So this is the calculation for both companies. Uh, Dutch Lady net profit margin is 6.7% while Carlsberg 9.3% where uh, it shows that Carlsberg has more ringgit that resulted in net profit compared to Dutch Lady. Okay, the next one for ratio analysis is liquidity ratio. This ratio measures the uh, short-term ability of an organization to pay debt and to meet unexpected need for cash. And the first one for liquidity ratio is current ratio. This ratio measures the ability of current assets to pay uh, the short term uh, debt. And this is the calculations for both companies. Dutch Lady have the current ratio of 0 0.89 while Carlsberg have 0 0.71 where it uh, shows that uh, current assets of Dutch Lady have higher ability to pay their uh, short-term debt compared to Casper. Okay, the second and last one for liquidity ratio is quick ratio. Quick ratio measures the company's immediate short-term uh, liquidity and this is the formula. The calculations for both uh, companies, uh, quick ratio for Dutch Lady is 0 0.42 while Casper is 0 0.22. Uh, this shows that Dutch Lady has higher ability uh, to meet its short-term financial commitments compared to Casper. Okay, uh, the last one for ratio analysis is solvency ratio. 
where solvency ratio measure the ability of a company to survive in a long period of time where the lower ratio is the better but if the ratio is too low it indicates that the company failed to use debt as financing so we start with debt to equity ratio uh, this ratio shows the value of total debt against total equity and this is the calculations for both companies so we'll see for that trade differs uh, in 2019, the debt to equity ratio is 2.07, while 2020 there is uh, 1.99, uh, where it, it means that uh, in 2020, Dutch Lady has a lower value of total debt against total equity. And then for Carlsberg, uh, it same goes as uh, for Carlsberg actually. Uh, the debt to equity ratio in 2019 is higher than 2020, so it means that. Uh, in 2020, Carlsberg uh, has lower value of total debt against total equity. And if we see from, from the whole picture, we can see that Dutch Lady have lower uh, debt to equity ratio compared to Carlsberg. Okay, so this means that uh, Dutch Lady has more ability to survive their long term debts and obligations over a long period of time compared to Casper. Okay, uh, the second and last one for solvency ratio is the debt to assets ratio. This ratio measures the percentage of assets that are being financed with debt. So this is the calculations for both companies. We will see for Dutch Lady first. In 2020, there is 0 0.65 debt to assets ratio while 2019, there is 0 0.65. Actually, the difference is not so big but we can still, still see the difference. Uh, which Dutch Lady has a uh, lower percentage of assets that are being financed with debt in 2020. As for Carlsberg, uh, in 2020, there is 0 0.75, while in 2019, there is 0 0.72. Again, the difference is not so big, but we can still, still see that uh, Carlsberg has a higher uh, percentage of assets that are being financed with debt in 2020. As for conclusion, it can be said that Dutch Lady has more positive feedback from horizontal, vertical and ratio analysis compared to Carlsberg. To determine which company is better to invest in, uh, we can use the last debt to asset ratio. In general, many investors are looking for company with debt ratio 0.3 to 0.6 because the higher ratio can make it harder to borrow money. So since both company Dutch Lady and Carlsberg has that ratio more than 0 0.6, I would like to recommend it that it's better to invest in Dutch Lady because the uh, that ratio is closer to 0 0.6 compared to Carlsberg. I hope my explanation is clear and helpful. So that's all from me. Thank you.